My name is Bobby, and I normally do videos that are predominantly for women who are 50 plus, and I cover things like beauty, home organization, just living the life in the midlife. So this video, we are going to focus on how to make yourself look your best in a very cheap way when you are doing like a video conference like Zoom, Google Meet, Skype, even FaceTime. So I'm gonna show you some what not to do and what to do and hopefully you guys can get yourself set up so you look your best. Light is the most important thing. So you want to avoid certain things. First of all, let's avoid direct sunlight. So I'm gonna show you an example of direct sunlight and why that does not look good. So this is an example of direct sunlight and this isn't even direct. Direct is like down here, that's direct. But this is also way too much light. The light is right here and it's making me look much more washed out and I'm kind of squinting my eyes a bit because it hurts my eyes. So you don't wanna have light that's coming at you so strongly and you don't wanna have something like this line going across me so that it distracts. You don't wanna do anything that's going to distract. So what do you do to make this better? First, shut the blinds. Okay, so I've shut the blind. I still have light coming from the window and I am my body is directed towards the window. If I were right on the window, it would be like this. But it's fine that it's pretty much on the right of me. But it needs to be only slightly to the right. You don't wanna have it be where the light is only right here next to me so that only this side of me is lit and this side is not. I'll show you how that looks. All right, I'm holding my camera so you see, but now you can see I'm very dark right here, but very light on this side. So you wanna have it so that the light is more central to your face. Okay, so I'm holding my phone. I'm over here, I'm looking straight at the camera, but right here is my source of light. My window is right here, I'll show you it. So I'm right there. But what do I do if this part is really dark and I don't have a light? So I have my husband here. He's going to hold up just a white pillow sheet. And that pillow sheet is going to bounce the light from the window to light up the left hand of my face. So Doug, go ahead and put it up. All right. It's not huge, but it definitely lights up this face. Here, put it down, hon. See how my, I get a little bit darker there? Having anything that will bounce off light, obviously, is going to help. One of the options I would highly recommend is getting a ring light. Now, you guys know that, those of you who watch my channel know that I normally film with a ring light because it gives you the best all-around light. It doesn't give you those harsh shadows. It gives you light from every angle. There is a cheaper version, and I'm going to link this below, but I got off the, this off of Amazon. I'm not sponsored or anything like that. So it's very small. But what I like about it is it's on its own tripod. I can raise it up. And then if you want to make it higher, of course, put it on a stack of books, put it on a box, put it on something. This one has many different light sources, which is probably not going to come across. But, well, maybe it will a little bit. Maybe that's showing. Yeah, a little bit. You want the white light. So if I had a shadow over here, if I show, turn it off, you can see that it's lighting up the left side of my face. So if that was a hard, like let's say I had more window here and I couldn't turn this way because I had no place to put my camera, having this giving me the other side would be a really good thing. So this is really, it's literally 20 bucks off of Amazon. I've really, I've used it quite often in my own filming for my own channel when I need to be in a spot that my big ring light can't be. You, you guys can actually see it right there. There's my camera and my ring light that I normally have on. The thing you don't wanna do is put any light underneath you. So this is the ring light underneath me. So what it does is it gives me harsh lines right here and above my nose. You don't wanna do that. You wanna have it more like that. So you've got as much sunlight coming on both sides or light. The other thing to keep in mind is your camera position. You want it to be either directly, like looking straight on as much as possible, 
or slightly higher. I think slightly higher is a little bit better. Right now, the camera is almost directly in front of me. Let me show you what not to do. Okay, you do not want to do this. You do not want to be looking down at the camera. First of all, it makes my hair come in front of my face and it makes me look closed in. It also makes a fan coming off of my side here. You don't want to do that. You want it to not show that kind of stuff. It's fine if that's in the background, but not coming right out of your head. So it also makes my eyes squint a little bit because I'm looking down instead of looking up with my eyes wide open. I'm looking down at you guys, at you right now. So you want to have it more. Ah. like that. So now I'm looking straight at you. I can get my hair back off my face and now it makes me look much more alive. Of course, it's crooked. Don't have a crooked camera. <laughs> but you also don't want to be looking up the whole time. That doesn't look good either. Let me show you how that looks. So this is an example of looking just a little bit too high. I have to strain my head to be able to look up at you. And it just doesn't look natural. It's kind of painful to watch somebody talk like this for any length of time. You're like, why is she so high? Like, lower the camera, lower everything. So don't be so high that it's way up here. Again, pretty much dead on or slightly higher. Okay, so right now I am recording on my laptop. And so it's you're showing a bunch of stuff behind me. Again, the same things apply. Look at all the space around me. It's good that it's up high and I'm gonna film, I'm gonna show you what this looks like. So I'm filming right now. You guys can see that it is on a filing cabinet right now and that's my laptop right there filming. You guys can see the window to the my right so I'm getting daylight from that and I'm only slight, it's only slightly to the right. But you can see based on this that it's just not the prettiest look. So let's make it be a little bit prettier. So first of all, let's bring this closer. Let's bring this down. So I'm just tilting my, my laptop a little bit closer. And now look at how much better that looks. You can see me. You can still see around me. I again have decluttered. The only thing I see back there that I would probably have gotten rid of is my oh, ring light right there. Same things apply. I have light, I don't have harsh shadows, I don't have a lot of things around me. You guys can hear me, but you need to test it out. You need to now listen to yourself. So record yourself on your laptop and see how you sound, see how you look. You can get a decent look from a laptop. You just have to do some minor adjustments to make it look better. You also don't want to talk so high that you can see every little thing in detail in somebody's face. It's uncomfortable. You would never talk this close to somebody and so they don't want to see you this close. So have a good distance apart, get yourself away, and think, okay, if somebody were this far apart from me, this would feel comfortable to talk to them. You also don't want to be so far away that they can hardly see you. So they can't hardly see any detail about my face and my expressions. I'm too, sm I'm too far away. Again, think about you want your face to take up a lot of the space, but not so close that it's uncomfortable. The other thing is, is I have all this space all around me and that's distracting. That's what they're looking at. They're looking at and they're, they're reading, what does my sign say here? And what's on, you know, what's back there? What perfume does she have? <laughs> Whatever. So have it so that you have a much more of you in the picture and less of the room like that. Now you can still see all of these things but it's less of that. I, you're looking and you see more of me. So I don't have a ton of space, but you also don't want to have it be like that. So the top of me is cut off. You want to have a tiny bit of space on top and then on the sides. Sound is an important thing. So try to be in a quiet room with as little distractions as possible. When I'm filming for my channel, I usually just tell my kids and my husband like, I'm filming now, can you guys not make a lot of noise? You would be amazed what a camera can pick up, especially a good camera. 
you do not need really an expensive camera. I am filming this on purpose without any external camera. This is all from my iPhone and I have an iPhone 11. My first year and a half, almost two years of my channel, I filmed exclusively on an iPhone 6 with no extra camera. I just didn't have the money to purchase it. So you can get good sound, but here's some tips. Because I'm this close to the phone, it's picking me up pretty well. So it's going to pick up your voice, but you do need to speak up. You don't want to yell. You don't want to have the person because they could have earbuds in. So speak up so the person can hear you clearly, but don't yell. The other thing to keep in mind is what is behind the camera or what is behind you. So think about what people are watching. So as you're watching me, what do you see behind me? First of all, is there any movement? Okay, clearly there's a fan going behind me and I know you might be hot. Turn the fan off. You can have a fan if it is in light of you filming. You can have a fan going behind you. What else do you see behind me? With a shirt, pants, remotes, dishes. You need to clear those things behind you. Make sure whatever it is that you're doing behind you is not distracting. It's distracting enough that I even have anything. Ideally, it would be nothing behind me. If you can, get to a wall that's just a blank wall behind you because that will distract in no way. But we all don't have those options. Sometimes a blank wall means there's no window. And I would sacrifice things behind me that are picked up. That would be okay to me to have all that stuff behind me, not the clutter, but just the room in order to have good light. So good light is the number one thing, but then declutter behind you if you need to get rid of some things. The other thing to keep in mind, could a child or an animal just all of a sudden walk in path of your camera shot? So shut the door behind you, make it so that nobody or any animal could just all of a sudden walk past. Accidents happen, like people are, there's grace here, of course, but if you can eliminate that from happening, go ahead and do that. If this is a professional kind of thing, your makeup look needs to look professional. This is not the time to put on your reddest of red lipstick, unless you're doing some kind of fashion interview or something. But most professional attire is pretty understated. Have your hair, it's fine that my hair is on my face this way, but it's not covering up my eyes at all. I usually, when I'm filming, I'll have it and I'll just kind of put it behind me a little bit more. I don't think you need to have it off your face or anything, but at least have it looking as good as you can make it look. I realize right now with hair, a lot of us are very soon going to be having some roots showing. This will be a good time for you to explore if you are one who wants to cover your gray. If you are one who are rocking your gray, go ahead and rock it and then that's what you want to do. But roots coming in is probably not the look you want to do. Again, people understand there is limited of what we can do right now, but you can cover your roots a bit. There is one tool that I use that I love. It's called Root Cover Up. It's by L'Oreal. You guys have seen this in grocery stores and things. You can order this online. I will link it below. This is an amazing thing to be able to cover up any grays that are starting to come in and you just need to get it to your color. This is actually way too dark for me. This I bought this before I lightened my hair. What about your makeup? There are key things that you wanna do. The only thing that somebody has, let's say this is the first time they're meeting you and it is by a video conference like this. They are going to make snap decisions. They don't know your personality. They know what they've seen on a piece of paper and that's it. And maybe your picture when it, it's in LinkedIn or something. So you have one, one shot to make a first impression. And this first impression is via a camera on your phone or your computer. So that's why we need to do the best foot forward. So when you're doing your makeup, you want to do something that will frame your face and bring out your features and eliminate or diminish the features you don't want to have come out. 
So when I did my makeup today, it's very minimal. It's hardly, it's hard to tell I'm wearing very much makeup. But the things that I concentrated on are my eyebrows. And I have a whole video on how to fill in eyebrows. And there's plenty of other ones on YouTube. So search on doing mature eyebrows. So fill them in, but they don't need to look like Instagram eyebrows, like extremely chiseled. They just need to flatter your face. You want to frame your face. Put mascara on so your eyes show up more. They don't need to be these massive fluttery things, but they do need to have some on there so that it's showing your eyes. Put on some blush so you're not so washed out and maybe some bronzer. And then of course, lipstick. And I chose a very minimal nude color lipstick, but at least it shows my lips because if you don't have lipstick on, this is what they're seeing. They're seeing your, your mouth talk and it just it doesn't look good if you don't have lips that are showing on it. So again, this is the only thing they have to go on. Show them your best face forward. Again, it doesn't need to be a lot, but just bring out your best features. A couple other things to keep in mind. Again, what are they looking at? They're looking at your eyes and they're looking at your teeth. So what are they seeing? And you guys know, if you watch my channel at all, you know I harp on this, but whiten your teeth. Now I get it if this is, you don't have anything and you can't order it, it's okay. Life goes on. But if you can get the products to be able to whiten your teeth, whiten them. I will link below what I use because I've used it for years. The other thing is the whites of your eyes. And let's, maybe you were nervous about going into this interview, if it's an interview or just a conference call with your boss or whatever, and you want to not look tired. So if you look tired and your eyes and your white eyes, the whites of your eye are all bloodshot, you might want to get rid of those. So another thing I've been using is Bosch and Lom's Lumify. This has been a wonderful thing. I did use it today. I still have red in my eyes, but it's not anywhere near as bad as it was. So definitely get the whites of your eyes and the teeth as white as they can. You want to look like you are a vibrant, awake, ready to take on the world person, not a tired, haggard, in the middle of a quarantine person, <laughs> especially if you are trying to get a job where you're going to be doing this on a regular basis. You're going to be video conferencing. You're going to be working online at home. You need to portray that you have the means to be able to do that and look good and have a very professional demeanor. Just random tips that I will tell you. First, practice. Record yourself and look back at what you see. So just have a conversation. Pretend you're talking to somebody and talk. How do you sound? If it's not loud enough, you need to project better. You need to enunciate your words. You need to be much more succinct in what you say. Look and see, did, you know, look behind you. If you're looking at something and you're distracted by your own things, go change something. Go take something down if you have to. Change your location if you can. Do you have a harsh shadow over here that you need to get rid of? Get a light. Go get a big piece of white paper. Get a pillowcase that's white and do something to reflect light like I told you before. Don't drink anything. Think to yourself, if I were in person with this, in, in front of this person live, would I be having a cup of coffee in my hand right now or a water bottle or something? Probably not during the actual interview. You might have brought it with you, but you're not going to whip it out unless you're like choking or something. So absolutely don't drink something during an interview or eat ah, or chew gum. I. <laughs> Keep in mind that any amount of movement will attract attention. So let's say you are in a group meeting. So you've got a bunch, you're on a Zoom call and they're, everybody's in and you can see everybody's little squares like the Brady Bunch. And any amount of movement people are going to look at and it's going to distract. So keep that in mind. Anytime you do what I just did and, and scratch, someone's going to look at it. Anytime you move anything, you'd be surprised how much um, sound, just even look at this, if I'm adjusting, it's distracting and they can hear it. 
And sometimes it sounds 10 times louder than what you hear. So don't, you know, get yourself completely situated before you start your video call. One of the best things that you could do is set up a test Zoom call. Zoom your best friend or Skype your best friend or your husband downstairs. It doesn't matter, but do one so that you can see what it looks like on their end. Record the conversation and then go back and look and then ask them, you know, did it look good? Did I sound okay? Ask their opinion, especially a girlfriend, because they're going to see more details than most husbands will. I know my husband <laughs> wouldn't see the details. So Zoom and practice with somebody so you see what it looks like. The other thing to do is keep in mind, this one's a hard one because you tend to kind of zone out. If it's a one-on-one, -on -one, it's very easy to stay attentive. Like you're very much looking at the person and you're very involved and you can nod and have a conversation. If you're in a conference call with, like I was on a conference call last night with 12 other people and it it was not I was noticing the difference how people looked. So there were some people who were kind of like this. And they may have been paying complete attention, but when I, and they pro they were, I mean, these women were very much paying attention, so no judgment on the people I was with in case they're watching this. But if I didn't know them, let's say I didn't know them and it's a big conference call, I would look at them and go, okay, that person is not interested. They're leaning back, their hands are crossed. You think you, you're like, you grab your phone and you're like this and you're looking up and down. Everyone knows you're looking at your phone. So don't, don't go into that temptation to look at something. They will notice it. So instead sit up straight. Make sure your back is straight. Make sure that you are, you know, having support. If you need to bring the um, back of your chair up to your back so that you have that support for a longer period of time. Let's say you're on this conference call for a long time. Make sure you've got that. Put a pillow behind you. Do whatever it takes for you to look attentive through the entire conference call, especially if there's more people and you are this one tiny little square amongst 12 other people. The other thing to do is don't be over exuberant. So don't be like, yeah, yeah, uh -huh. and smile as big as you possibly can. Like, don't be over, like you don't have to do that. The other thing is don't be no smile. So let me show you the difference. So if I'm talking to you and you're, I'm listening to you, this is more listening. And I look, I'm sitting up straight and everything and I'm like this. Okay, I look mad at that point, but have you can have a slight smile. So think slight smile, go. Now I'm not smiling, but I am not looking mad anymore. There's just this slight smile. You can practice it in the mirror. You can practice it video. You're, you know, film yourself and see how that would look and have just a slight smile because it makes you look a little bit more interested in what the person is saying to you or what all the people are saying. You want to look interested. Do not wear something on the bottom half of you that you would be embarrassed for them to see. Now, I don't think you need to put on dress slacks or a skirt or some high heels. You don't need to do that. As I'm talking to you now, I have leggings on, but they're black leggings and they're not too tight or anything. I'm wearing a sweater, but the sweater is looser. If something were to happen, and this has happened to people, you guys have seen the commercials, where the camera falls and all of a sudden, the bottom half of me is shown and I am wearing, you know, pajama bottoms, that's embarrassing and you don't want to show that. So have at least something that you would not be mortified if they saw it. If you want more tips on how to do makeup and, and make yourself look as best as you can, of course my channel has a ton of those kind of things. So please be sure to go and check them out. If you have any questions, please put them below. I'll answer anything I can. I will see you guys hopefully in another video. If you haven't subscribed, 
consider doing that if you are a woman 50 plus, because that is my target audience. You are it. All right, guys, I will see you in the next video. God bless.